Hi, I've had love with Pat's two cents. I believe the Lord laid a thought on my heart about us as born-again Christians in this dark, dark world. What are we doing with the darkness? How do we represent? What are we, what kind of example are we setting? What are we doing to make a change in other people's lives, if anything? Okay, I'm going to share a little story, a little scenario with you. These thoughts came, I believe, straight from the Lord because they were examples I never even thought of. And I've been reading these scriptures over decades and decades. Um, picture yourself in an emergency situation where you have to save a person's life. And you have enough life-saving skills to do so, but it's dark. It's extremely dark outside. The lights are out. The power's out. You have no way of seeing what you're doing, and you need to do something quickly in order for this person not to die. But you don't have any light. You have your tools, but you don't have light. You need to be able to see what you're doing. You have to do a little cutting and opening up and, and penetrating and doing whatever you have to do to save this person's life. Nobody has light. And somebody says, oh, here, I got a flashlight. These are those powerful ones. And you're like, oh, thank you. You grab the light, you turn the switch on, no light. No light. Somebody get me a flashlight that works. What do you do with that flashlight? Here, try to do something with it. I need something that works. Somebody else comes up. I got a light. You flick the switch. Nothing. You get so angry You just because you're looking at this person dying because there is no light. So the person lays there and dies in the darkness. Because everyone who says they have a light has no power. Do you hear? Do you hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches? Do you hear that? How many people have to die in the darkness because we have no light? Okay. I'm going to read a scripture. I want you to hear this. And then I'll come back with Pat's two cents once again. This is Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 13 to 16. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven mm, think about that think about that think about it you have to get somewhere you have to get somebody to the hospital because they have an emergency situation maybe they can't breathe maybe they're having a heart attack whatever the case may be their lifeline is you. And the only way you're going to get this Pat's two cents, the only way you're going to get them to the hospital is by getting them in your car. You'll get them quicker, quicker than waiting for the paramedics to get to you because the house is maybe a little in a remote section. So it'll take twice as long for that person to get to the hospital when you can get them right there. So what happens? You get them in your car. You get somebody to help you load them in your car. Oh, you've got all the best intentions. You're going to save this person's life. 
and you stick your key in the ignition and you turn on the ignition and you intend to start the car and what's wrong your starter is fine there's nothing wrong with your starter switch the problem is your battery is low why is your battery low because it lacks the power it needs to run in the meantime this person is laying there potentially at death's door because your car doesn't have enough power to get that person to the hospital where they can have their life saved. What good is the car going to do that person when you can't even get it started? There's nobody around you to jump your battery because everybody's so far away and the people that are right around you they don't have jumper cables or worse yet they don't even have a car for you to jump the battery with so there's no transference of power power is so necessary in our lives you guys this world is getting deeper and deeper into darkness. We have to have power with the demonic forces that are being let loose, with the evil that is overtaking our governments and, and our politicians and, and the police and the, the soldiers that are in charge of martial law, whatever you want to call it. There is evil being let loose in this world, all over. And if they don't see our good works, we are nothing but a laughing stock. We as the body of Christ are nothing more than a joke. A sick, weak, defenseless joke to them. Because there are non-Christians that live rings around us as far as holiness, righteousness, and integrity goes. We claim, we have the claim to fame, but all we have is the name. The flashlight won't light without power. The car won't start without power in that battery. We can't make a change in this world without the power of God working in our lives. And the first, the initial evidence is our living a holy life, our, us speaking a holy language, us loving with a holy love. Okay. That's for you to think about. Chew on that one, yeah? You don't need to chew on chewing gum or some tobacco. Chew on that. And ask God to help every one of us. I'm included in that number. Every one of us. Let our light shine to the point where it makes a difference. Because a dim light ain't about doodoo squat when you've got to really see an intricate procedure. God bless you.